Everyone says for your first total solar eclipse, don't photograph it, just enjoy it. Which makes sense to me. It's a huge phenomenon that may come once or twice in a lifetime, if you're lucky. So why bother futzing with your camera equipment, bracketing exposures, and everything like that? Just look up in the sky and enjoy the solar eclipse. That makes sense to me. And yet, for my first total solar eclipse, I'm going to try and photograph it. It's March 2024, and the next North American total solar eclipse is months away. Being based in New York City, I contemplated venturing upstate to Buffalo or Rochester for a better vantage point. However, April's unpredictable weather and the looming threat of cloud cover gave me pause. Then, as fate would have it, an unexpected opportunity presented itself. My girlfriend's mother lives in Hot Springs, Arkansas, which is right in the path of totality. So, I guess I know where I'm going. Clips. I've got my setup here. I've got my two C Star S50s, Voyager 1, Voyager 2, with the solar filters on. And I've got my Canon RP with uh, Sigma telephoto lens six, at 600 millimeters. With the solar filter on as well. And then over here, I've got my little workstation laptop with the Set and C Eclipse software connected to the Canon RP. And over here I've got uh, my C-Star, one of my C-Stars connected to my laptop here. And I don't know if you can see it, but here's the sun. Some, some sunspots. It's all looking good. I think we're in good shape. Hopefully the weather cooperates and we get a good view tomorrow for the big show. Let's talk about weather for a second. All right, for about two weeks straight leading up to today, it seems like that's what everyone was talking about, the weather, and how awful it would be for most of the United States. Travel plans changed en masse, and for a while it was not looking great for the lower 48, especially Texas and Arkansas. But let's back up for a second. In 2017, I witnessed my first partial solar eclipse in New York City. I wasn't even an astrophotographer yet, just someone interested in space. I remember that day, my makeshift solar viewer was a bust. Luckily, a nice stranger gave me solar glasses and I got to view a partial eclipse through it. It was at that moment, gazing at the crescent-shaped sun, that I knew capturing a total solar eclipse would become an obsession. And it did. So much so that I've been planning for the last six months for this day. I actually flew all of my equipment to Houston because I was there for work up until a week before today. And I prepped and I did practice runs uh, of the Set and C Eclipse software to make sure I had everything correct. I made a checklist and checked it more than twice. It was the most prepared I've ever been for astrophotography. And the only thing risking ruining this day was the weather. But these are the things you just have to hope will work out in the end. All right, so we do have some clouds, but not a whole bunch. And I'm hoping that most of these clouds will burn off uh, once it's time for the big show. So I've got my stuff set up again, this time for real. And uh, cross our fingers and hopefully uh, we'll have some unobstructed views. Thank you. 
partial eclipse right there. <laughs> And just like that, it was all over. But the memories remain, seared viscerally into my head. Memories of crescent-shaped shadows projected onto the ground, and the shadow snakes which I just happened to see right before totality. And totality itself. The moon is so black, hypnotic even, it pulls you in, demanding to be seen. The corona emanates from behind with pink-colored prominences flickering off the sun's surface. I could see it all, not just with a telescope, but with my own eyes. And I remembered to look around. There's Jupiter and Venus hanging out with the sun and the moon. And the temperature, during totality, it wasn't hot or cold for me. It was almost like there was no temperature. And everyone talks about the light being eerie, and that's true. It's reminiscent of the way light changes during a thunderstorm, but this light felt even more alien than that. There's something undeniably magical about standing in the shadow of the moon. It's a moment of pure connection with the cosmos, a reminder of our place in the vastness of space. I get it now. I get why people chase eclipses all over the world. I feel changed. Not sure how, but, but I do. And when it comes to total solar eclipses, the allure is irresistible. And the experience is truly out of this world.